Hi book lovers, welcome back to my channel. I have been working on today's video for a while, but this video is going to be all about vampire romances because I ended up reading five of them over the course of one, two weeks. I didn't intentionally set out to do like a vampire romance TBR or read vampire romances back to back, but I figured after reading two of them in a row, I might as well just continue on. This all started with none other than Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer. This is a reason for this whole vampire romance video. I'm sure you're not surprised. I read this and then I got an arc right after I finished of A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire by Jennifer L. Armentrout. So I figured, all right, let's do another vampire romance. And then a day or two after I got that arc, I also got another arc for The Jackal by J.R. Ward, which is part of her new Black Dagger Brotherhood series. And by that point, I was just thinking I should probably just do a vampire romance video so here it is. Like I said I read five books, Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer, A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire by Jennifer L. Armentrout which is the sequel to From Blood and Ash, The Sinner by J.R. Ward which is the latest book in the original Black Dagger Brotherhood series, The Jekyll also by J.R. Ward which is the first book in a new spin-off series, and last is Crave by Tracy Wolf. Honestly I'm surprised that I even made it through this TBR because two of them are actually young adult books, although technically Honestly, I don't even know what to categorize Midnight Sun as, but Crave is a young adult book. I wasn't really going to include it, I wasn't going to read it, but I figured since I read one high school romance, I might as well read another one. But yeah, I actually read some young adult books. If you couldn't tell, I don't read them. I don't read them anymore. They're just not my genre anymore. But luckily I did enjoy one of them much more than the other one. Also before I get started about what I thought about these books, I do want to say that I have a giveaway going on on my Instagram for a signed copy of From Blood and Ash by JLA. This is being sent straight from the author. It's open internationally so I'll leave a link down below if you want to go enter. So let's talk about all the vampire romances that I read in the past two weeks. Like I said Midnight Sun was first. I honestly completely forgot about when this book was releasing. I didn't even know it released early August until people were posting about it on Instagram. I didn't pre-order it. I didn't put it on hold at the library, which was really weird because I actually did get really excited about it when it was first announced that um, Midnight Sun was releasing. But I did end up getting the ebook on Amazon, which I ended up returning so I could get the hardcover um, from Costco. Costco usually has the cheapest books. This one was $15.99. I think it was $2 cheaper than the Amazon hardcover. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty big book. I think it's bigger, taller than the other Twilight books, which is pretty annoying. I actually only own Breaking Dawn. I don't even own the first three books. So I read the ebook and I really enjoyed this one, you guys. It was so good. Not perfect and definitely not as good or like as amazing as I as my 12 year old self was hoping it would be but I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. It was mostly a nostalgia read. I mean I was definitely one of those girls who read and reread multiple times um, the leaked chapters of um, Edward's point of view of Twilight that Stephanie Meyer ended up posting on her website. I remembered those chapters so so, so well um, before going into Midnight Sun because again I reread those chapters multiple times. I was obsessed with Edward's point of view. It was a long time coming for the full book to release over 10 years but it's here and I was actually while reading Midnight Sun I was trying to see where the original chapters or the late chapters left off and when new material started and I think it's after their first dinner together at that Italian restaurant. Also if you don't have the hardcover this is what the title page looks like. I honestly don't know what kind of expectations I had um, for this but besides like reading it for nostalgia but it did not disappoint. It was a really fun read. It brought me back so many years and I will say that it was a little hard to read this book without imagining um, the Twilight movie actors as these characters. The movies were just so entwined with these stories after they came out um, that I couldn't imagine 
Edward not as Robert Pattinson and Kristen Stewart not as Bella. I mean, I tried. I definitely had my own imagination of what those two looked like before the movies came out, but yeah, I was just picturing the entire Twilight movie while I was reading this. I actually remembered a lot more of this story than I thought I did. It's been a long time since I read Twilight. I don't think I ever even reread the book, but I have rewatched the movies many times. But it was just really nice revisiting Forks, revisiting the Cullens, Charlie, Bella, all of course from Edward's point of view. And what's really nice about this being in Edward's point of view is that we also pretty much get everyone else's point of view except for Bella's because Edward is your neighborhood mind reader. We get to know what all the Cullens thought about Bella, what they were thinking in general, um, what the high school classmates were thinking. So Edward's mind reading added a depth to this book that I really wasn't expecting even though I should have. So to summarize this book, I would say that it's 90% Edward being anguished and angsty and tortured, 9% um, him wanting to kill Mike Newton and every other guy who had a crush on Bella, and 1% Edward wanting to kill slash drink from Bella. And you would think that all of that combined would not make for the best read, but it actually all worked, at least for me. I mean, yes, Edward does take dramatic to the extreme. He is so dramatic about how he's no good for Bella. Bella's so much better than him. Um, he doesn't deserve her. He should leave her, but also he should protect her from anything that'll possibly kill her, like a random meteor that will kill her while she sleeps. That's pretty much his excuse for why he watches her sleep at night. A lot of it is him making excuses for why he needs to be around her. Um, but honestly, I thought it was kind of endearing, kind of cute, not gonna lie. His possessiveness, his jealousy, I was surprised by, but I really enjoyed that aspect as well. I mean, I love my alpha heroes. I wouldn't really call Edward an alpha hero though, but I mean, I'm used to alpha tendencies from other romances. The protectiveness, the possessiveness, the jealousy. That was really fun to read. It was really, really funny to read how Edward literally wanted to kill Mike every single day, every single school day. Like, oh hey, there's Mike. He's thinking those teenage boy thoughts about Bella. I should probably snap his neck for thinking those things. Bella herself was all right. I mean, it was nice to see how, like why Edward found her so alluring. Um, like he just could not figure her out. But honestly, she was kind of boring from his point of view. She was just this perfect being to him. Like she's perfect without makeup, unlike the rest of the high school students. She's so much smarter than them, even though she's falling in love with a vampire. There's not much I can say about her besides that I forgot that she loved to put herself in really dumb and dangerous situations. The Cullens though, I think that's one of the highlights about reading Midnight Sun. I mean, Carlisle, Esme, Jasper, Alice, Emmett, and Rosalie, they're all really interesting and fascinating characters and we don't get enough of them. We never got enough of them in the Twilight series from Bella's point of view. But we get an in-depth look of how each person turned, well minus Jasper and Ellis, but we see how Carlisle turned the rest of his family. We see how this family bond was formed a hundred years ago. We get to see how much Carlisle means to Edward, like he is truly this father figure for him. I love that we get to see how the mated pairs actually met for the first time, how they first fell in love. Emmett and Rosalie's story was surprisingly my favorite on how they met and how they ended up mates. But I was really surprised about how often the Cullens talked about turning Bella into a vampire. Like Alice sees a vision of her being a vampire and I don't think that's ever revealed in the first book but they talked about turning her a lot especially as a family and also through Edward we get to see how everyone's powers are used like Jasper and his emotion controlling, Alice's 
foresight. I thought that was really interesting, especially Jasper using his emotional controlling thing, because um, I honestly forgot, completely forgot that he did have like superpowers. But again, I was reading this imagining every character as the Twilight actors. It was so hard to separate the two for me. I was imagining the Twilight movie scenes as I was reading this, like the infamous baseball scene. I was literally singing in my head the Muse song that would play in the movie. And of course, the baseball scene is what leads to them meeting James, um, the tracker who wants to kill Bella. We get completely new material about Edward and the Cullens trying to lead James away from Bella. We get brand new scenes of Edward and Emmett trying to track down and kill James. It was very much a behind the scenes look at what happened in Twilight, which I loved so much. This was just a really great read for me. I'm glad Stephanie Meyer finally released it, that I finally read it. I probably would have given this five stars though if I read it when those first Midnight Sun chapters were leaked. Definitely would have loved this 100% if I'd read it, but it was still great. It was a four star read for me. I would highly recommend it if you love Twilight, if you love Edward. But again, he is one angsty, anguished boy Boy who tortures himself way too much um, but it still worked for me. I mean I ended up getting the hardcover um, after I finished the ebook because I wanted it that much and I am actually really hoping that Stephanie Meyer ends up writing Edward's point of view for the rest of the series because um, I would love to know what he thought especially in Eclipse and Breaking Dawn. There actually has been an announcement. I think two more things coming from Stephanie Meyer set in this world. I don't know if they're actually Edward point of view books. I'm really hoping they are because that's all I really want. But I guess we'll see what she actually has in store for us after this book. And then I read one of my most anticipated sequels of the year. That is A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire by Jennifer L. Armentrout, which is the sequel to From Blood and Ash, which is one of my favorite books of this year. The ending from From Blood and Ash absolutely killed me. And Echo Faf literally picks up right where this ending starts. I'm going to keep my review of Akofaf as vague as possible because I can't really talk about the book without spoiling the entirety of From Blood and Ash. I don't even know what I should call the hero because that's also a major spoiler, but I mean I loved Akofaf maybe a little bit less than From Blood and Ash. It's like a four, four and a half star read for me, whereas this one was four and a half to five stars. But it was still so, so good. Loved being back in this vampire world that JLA has created. Poppy was a fantastic heroine from book one, and I still loved her in the sequel. Cass, I'm just gonna call him Cass because that's his name on the blurb. He was amazing as usual. I fell in love with him by the end of From Blood and Ash. He was dark and mysterious, but opened up a lot more in this sequel. Mainly this sequel is Poppy learning a ton more things about um, everything that she was blinded to. She learns more about the vampires, about the wolven, the Atlanteans, the Ascended. It's more of a lesson learning book, which is why I don't I didn't love it quite as much as the first book. There's not as much action as there was in book one, at least not until the last maybe quarter of the book. We get to learn about Karen a lot more, who is Cass's best friend and also a woven. A much bigger cast is introduced and Poppy realizes that a lot of people are not big fans of hers. They hate her for being, for who she was, for being the maiden. There's lots of politics, lots of intrigue, and it was all great. I still really enjoyed it. I love these characters, but I do wish that was a little bit more action and not just left towards the end of the book. Still, it is definitely a must read if you loved book one. Uh, the ending was crazy. I mean, if you read the last hundred pages of From Blood and Ash, then you know the kind of craziness to expect. In the last few chapters of Akofaf, it was so intense, so epic. Um, the last page literally had me screaming out loud like what is this what is going on it was crazy i didn't expect it but now i am dying for book three which i'm pretty sure will also have some insane massive cliffhanger until book four which i think should be the last book that's about as much as i can say without spoiling anything um so it's a great follow-up lots more stuff to learn in this book 
as well as future books. I'm just really excited for everyone to read it and go crazy over that ending. And also a side note, I'm sure I'm not the only one who is thinking this, but the book title, the acronyms for it, absolutely reminded me of Sarah J Maas, the Court of Thorns and Roses series. Next, I ended up reading two vampire romances from J.R. Ward, The Sinner and The Jackal. This is actually a review copy. I never got to it until last week, which is a long, long time from the release date of last March. Jessica from Peace Love Books had been hounding me to read it, um, but I finally did and it was Okay, I'm giving this three stars, which is not a common rating that I give for any Black Dagger Brotherhood book, but this one I just didn't really care enough about. This is Sin and Joe Early's book, but they were two characters that I just didn't really care about or care for. Sin was introduced a couple books back, but I honestly completely forgot who he was, what he did, why, like how was he related to the Black Dagger Brotherhood. So his character was all right. I mean, he didn't really leave much of an impression, at least not like, you know, the original Black Dagger Brotherhood boys. Joe Early was pretty bland as well. Their romance was um, pretty quick. Sin was like this bad boy who didn't care about anything, um, much less himself. He just loved to kill people, kill things, and have sex. But as soon as he meets Joe, that all changes for him. Usually I'm okay with insta-lust, insta-love, especially in paranormal romances and mates, faded mates, but this one was just I don't know, kind of boring. Because I didn't care that much about the main characters, I just couldn't get into their romance. And then of course we have more freaking Butch. I am honestly very tired of reading Butch in these last Black Dagger Brotherhood books. I mean, I know he's the destroyer and there's this whole destroyer arc with the bad guys. I just don't really care about it anymore. That whole arc, that whole story has been going on for so freaking long that I just want it to be done. I think it's done at this point by this book, by the end of it. And also the whole Davina thing, she showed up at the end of The Savior, the book before this one. She's from the Fallen Angel series, which I have not read, but that's what people tell me, that she's from the Fallen Angel series. She doesn't really show up or do anything until the very end of this book, so it's kind of like, what's the point? Still, I will admit, I did like being back in this world. I did like seeing a lot of the boys again. I do love V, even though I'm not the biggest fan of Butch, but those two are like two peas in a pod. So this one was okay. Definitely not one of my favorites from the BDB series. This is book 18, um, but I am really excited for the next release, which is one of the winter ones, like book 18.5, because we're revisiting Blay and Quinn. I love those two, so I'm really happy that we get more of them. And then of course, after I read The Sinner, I had to jump into the newest release, which is The Jackal. This is the first book in the spin-off series, Black Dagger Brotherhood Prison Camp. We've been hearing about this prison camp for a while, but this is the first book, I think, where we finally dive into what the heck it is. The Jackal I was really excited to get into because Jerry Ward told us that the hero um, is Rage's half-brother and Rage is my favorite brother. But this book was such a disappointment. I ended up listening to the audiobook and usually I have a really easy time with audiobooks. Um, it takes a lot for me to get annoyed or not enjoy an audiobook. So uh, this one was two stars for me. It was truly a struggle to get through because I just did not like the heroine. Nyx, our heroine, goes into this prison camp because her older sister was sent there like 50 years ago. She didn't believe that her sister deserved to be there. She was falsely sentenced to this prison, so she's trying to find her and get her out. Nyx comes across the Jackal, our hero, whose name is literally the Jackal. He has been there for much longer than 50 years, so he knows the layout of the prison. He knows how things work, how the guards like shift schedules, whatever. So he ends up helping her find her sister. But my god, Nyx is the most frustrating heroine ever. She is stubborn to a fault. Um, she thought she knew everything. She kept thinking that she was more capable than she was. She kept putting herself in these dangerous situations where other people were forced to save her, not just for her life, but for their lives. She just had me so, so annoyed. She was definitely the reason why I couldn't enjoy this one more. Even towards the end, she kept making really frustrating decisions because she kept thinking that, oh, I know how this is gonna go. I know how this is gonna work but of course she doesn't. The Jackal was 
okay I guess he definitely didn't live up to my expectations for how for him being Rage's half-brother there's this whole mystery of why he refuses to leave the prison even though he's completely capable of it and even though he's got all this mystery he was still kind of bland as a hero also the whole the biggest mystery of what the jackal's real name is I don't think it was ever really said. Nyx just calls him Jack, so that's his name now, I guess. So yeah, this one was very disappointing. Not the greatest start to a new series. I gave it two stars. I have no idea who's going to be next, but I can't say that I'm all that excited about it. And then the last vampire romance that I read was Crave by Tracy Wolf. This is the first in a new series. It is young adults set in this Alaskan high school academy. And this one was so, so boring. I just could not find anything exciting or special about the story. I also gave this one two stars. It wasn't frustrating like the jackal was, but it was just so, so boring. And it being 15 hours long, because I listened to the audiobook, the paperback I think is about 600 pages. For a book that long, boring is not good at all. There just wasn't anything that set this apart from any other vampire high school romance out there. I mean, pretty much everything was fairly predictable. I did appreciate that there are different kinds of paranormal creatures besides vampires. There's like witches, shapeshifters, wolves, dragons, but all that wasn't enough to make me enjoy this more. Grace, the heroine, falls in love with Jackson, our bad boy vampire hero way too quickly and pretty much over like a series of texts. Jackson is of course your resident bad boy. He's dangerous or at least that's what people um, say that he is. Everyone at this school gives him a huge wide berth. They don't interact with him or his buddies all that much because they're scared of him. And he does have some really interesting powers that I did not expect but his romance with Grace was just okay. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. There was just no depth to any of these characters. There was nothing that set them apart from your stereotypical, you know, quiet good girl who moves to the middle of Alaska because her parents died. Things happening around her are a little weird. Things are a little off. She's trying to figure out why. And of course the bad boy hero that she has a crush on is in the middle of it all. As much as I wish I could have loved it more, it was just so painfully boring. It's the first in a series. Book two is actually releasing really soon. I doubt I'll read it, but I do love the cover of the sequel of Crush. It's not quite a blatant ripoff of the Twilight cover like the first book is, but if you like your typical paranormal romance, high school setting, vampire romance, I mean this is pretty average I guess, but a lot of people seem to like it. So those were the five vampire romances that I read. Let me know what you guys think. If you read any of these, if you liked them, if you hated them, let me know. Links for them will be down in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye!